Good evening all. Um, welcome to, I guess, a walkthrough tutorial of um, your next couple of lessons. Basically, the plan today is to get us prepared for a bit of a walkthrough exam um, that you'll do over the next couple of sessions. So this is Tuesday's lesson. I just want to talk you through questions one, two, three, and four in preparation for um, that sort of test, I guess, for want of a better word, that you would do on Thursday and Friday. Um, this will be doing a few videos. I can only record for 15 minutes, so I'm going to do questions one and two, and possibly three, and then questions three and four, or, or whatever I can do in that last video. And it's just a bit of um, a reminder of some of the key features and uh, a guide to how you're going to answer those questions. And you can just pause it, do the activities along with me. Um, and this is what we'd be doing, I guess, if we're in lesson, a little bit we're working towards those. So it's only a walk through today. Um, we're going to work on a source together, answer some questions together, and then, and then we'll be in the best position we can be going into the last couple of lessons this week. So I apologise if I stumble over words. Um, I can record this sort of live, so I can't edit it or anything like that. So we'll do the best that we can. Um, so first of all, uh, just a reminder of our English language paper one. We've got an hour and 45 minutes on this. We're going to be looking at questions one to five over the next few lessons, but focusing on questions one, two, three, and four today. Um, so a reminder of question one, really straightforward, listing four things about part of the text. We're all quite confident with that one. Just got to make sure we're reading carefully. So question two is that language analysis. So again, it's building up those skills, getting just a little bit harder from that first question, eight marks for there. And we're looking at question three, that sort of new one, slightly more challenging in terms of the structure, um, looking at the way the ideas are organised, the way the writers put the text together, and then finally bringing all those skills together for that tougher 20 mark of a question four, where we've got to really sort of get into that statement, use our skills of language analysis, our structural analysis, and um, bring in some of our points of view and opinion as well. Um, obviously we've got then 40 marks available for our question five and that descriptive writing you've practised over the last couple of weeks for me. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, let's have a look at our question one. So this is based on the White Fang source. It's in our folder. You should have found it by now, hopefully. Um, and we're asked to read again the first part of the source from lines one to six, list four things that White Fang does from this part of the source. Um, so just to come to the source itself, I was going to remind us of this top little box here, really important for our content and our context to really understand what we're about to read. So I'm going to read that with you. I'm just going to pick out a couple of the key things that I would and then we'll have a look at question one. So this set, story is set in a farm in Canada. White Fang is the name of a wild wolf-like dog guarding the house of the Scott family. So I think that's quite important for me just to remember. Um, Judge Scott, the judge's wife and the judge's son. Weed and Scott whom White Fang calls Master, might be important just to know who Master is. In the middle of the night, an intruder called Jim Hall breaks into the house to try and murder the judge. White Fang refers to Jim Hall as the strange god. And again, just my knowledge as I'm reading through, probably important for me to know that. Now, question one, based on lines one to six. So first thing I'm going to do is just section off lines one to six. I'm going to skim through it. Remember, we're being asked here, what do we learn that White Fang does from this part of the source? So that's all I want you to do. Just pause the video here for a second um, and have a go with your source of finding those four things. And I'm going to do the same as you do. So just pause it here and off we go. Okay, so if we go to our answers, it should be relatively straightforward. Four things he does. White Fang awoke. It says on the first line, he lay very quietly. Um, he smelled the air. He read the message that the air bore. And if you thought about the strange god, um, his presence, then fine. Um, White Fang heard the sounds of the strange god. White Fang walked softly and White Fang followed silently. All those in lines one six. Remember, you can use direct quotations. Um, always better if you can try and make those answers make sense as an independent sentence. So you see, I put White Fang in all of that just to clarify for my examiner that I know exactly what I'm talking about there. But give yourself a mark out of four 
hopefully hopefully that's quite a straightforward one for us and should be a, a nice way to get off the mark now question two as I said earlier is a little more complex um, we're given part of this source again just like we were in question one but we've got to get our language analysis here um, and if we look at what we're being asked in this question um, I'm hoping I can do some terrible highlighting for you because um, I'm going to read and highlight the question as we always will so the writer used language really important and here we're looking at white fangs attack so the actual attack of the dog on this strange god on this stranger who's visited the house um, so we're given the exact extract here um, but if like me you're going to be working on your own copy it's probably worth just sectioning off again um, so lines 7 to 16 so it's just this, this next couple of paragraphs and we're looking at the attack so what I'm going to do is read it through with you um, I'm going to have a highlighter pen and just a pen to make some notes and we think about how this attack is described to us so the strange god paused at the foot of the great staircase and listened and white fang was as dead so without movement was he as he watched and waited up that staircase the way led to the master and to the master's dearest possessions white fang bristled but waited the strange god's foot lifted he was beginning the ascent then it was that white fang struck he gave no warning with no snarl anticipated his own action into the air he lifted his body in the spring that landed him on the stranger's god's back white fang clung with his forepaws to the man's shoulders at the same time burying his fangs into the back of the man's neck he clung on for a moment long enough to drag the god over backward together they crashed to the floor white fang leapt clear and as the man struggled to rise was in again with slashing fangs so quite a vicious attack so i'm going to really focus on, on sort of the the ferocity of this attack in my description so what i think is interesting to begin with is the fact that white fang was anticipating he was waiting for this man it's as if he's prepared um remember we're looking at language analysis here so was as dead i'm going to pick out my simile here that's going to annotate um, and i'm going to think it's about this sort of being prepared maybe quite calculating clearly an intelligent dog it is it knows its job it knows what it's about to do um, this idea of the verbs here watched and waited um, this dog's alert it's prepared it's controlled it doesn't go straight for the attack it's not barking really loudly it is knowledgeable about what's going to happen next and then in this new sentence we've got so new paragraph we've got a really short sentence here so for me this is about sort of the speed of the attack maybe the ferocity of that attack um, really effective to change we've got this sort of waiting in this first section and then very violent we think about struck if i use that word again we've got slashing fangs that verb really powerful Now I know that I've got eight marks here. I'm looking for two paragraphs, which means I need four quotations. Well, I've got my four here. I've got my simile, my verbs here, my short sentence, and some really sort of violent imagery towards the end there. So that's going to be my quotations. You'd go for the same ones. You could choose slightly different ones if you wanted to. Um, what am I going to say about the attack? Well, that he's patient. This dog is controlled. He is waiting for the opportune moment to attack. And when he does, it's vicious and violent. We've got burying his fangs as well. I think that's a really nice um, nice verb there. So lots you can go at. Now, to help you with this, we've got a sentence structure here. So as always, we've got our P-E-E-F structure. Focus point, how is this attack described? So you've got the violence, you've got 
the sort of the intelligence or the preparedness of the dog, um, your quotation, really making sure you've got your language terminology. So the writer's use of violent verbs or the simile, make sure you've got your short quotation in there and what that shows and how it makes a reader feel as well. And then look at the development. So choosing that second quotation to really build on that first bit of analysis that you've done. Um, again, make sure that you've got your terminology in there, even if it is word, but I'd rather see your verb, adjective, adverb, simile, metaphor, whatever it might be, um, using that terminology really well. Okay, so just pause this video. I want to use these um, sentence starts as a bit of a guide um, and spend just the next 10 minutes having a go. Just write in one. So just practice with one of those paragraphs. No need to write them both. Really awkward knowing how long to leave for you to pause, but anyway, we'll go on to question three. So question three, a reminder is your structure question. So it's always going to be laid out like this. So you now need to think about the whole of the source. Don't worry, I'm not going to read it all for you. You can do that. Um, the whole of the source for this one. And think about the way that ideas have been sort of put in this order and why, how things are developed, how things are changed. So remember, this is no language analysis. It's all about those structural techniques that we're looking for. So we're going to think about where our focus is in at, at the beginning, how that develops, where it changes, um, any new characters that might be introduced, what happens to the pace, the tension that's developed, and anything else throughout this that is going to be of interest to you. So again, I'm just going to flip to my source. Um, two paragraphs are aiming for here. So ideally, I'm going to look for four quotations again. So I'm just finding my pen that dropped on the floor. And those paragraphs, so those, those quotations are going to come from four sections of this. I'm always going to pick one from the beginning. I'm always going to think about a change towards sort of the beginning to the middle, something in the middle, and then something at the end to finish off. Okay, so four quotations. So I'm going to think about the introduction, what's first introduced to us, a change around here, a development here, and then the ending of the source. How is it left for us as a reader? So when I think about this, this first bit, we've got White Fang introduced to us straight away. Um, so we've got the introduction of a character, although obviously it's a dog. Um, and I'm going to think about sort of the pace, the, the atmosphere here. It's quite um, tense. It's very still, quiet. Obviously, we've got this idea of building tension that we know something's going wrong, we know someone's in the house, we know this dog is waiting. So we've immediately got a tension created for us as a reader. What then happens? Well, we get this dramatic shift to the violent attack. So we've got change of pace, maybe change of focus here, as we've got the attack on this intruder from the dog. Um, we've got some confusion, a bit of panic in there. And it's a real sort of dramatic shift from that first one. It's quite surprising. It really heightens the violence of that attack. So then where do we go? We've got this attack and then we have the discovery of the body. So as this family come down the stairs, we've got the discovery, we've got a bit of tension as they sort of have their guns in hand. But then we sort of find this gaping throat, this man who's, who's lying there dead. So in terms of tension, we've got a bit of tension falling. It's maybe quite shocking for us as a reader. But we can see sort of the, the violent potential of this dog. The ending, the focus on, on White Fang as he's sort of the life slowly ebbing from his body. So we've got, we've got the death of White Fang. And the sympathy that we feel there is a really sad ending, um, especially when we think about how is this developed from that first paragraph when he's waiting. Well, his only intention here is to protect his family. So because we know all this, that he's waiting to protect them, it makes his death even more upsetting. I'm going to think about how this image of White Fang, even in these what, short 35 lines, has been created. So in essence, what have I done? I've got my two paragraphs here. So my paragraph one, my point is going to be focused on this introduction, evidence explained, and I'm going to think about how that develops 
into this sort of shocking, violent attack. Paragraph two is going to start with this discovery of the body. And then sort of the furthermore, the development section is going to focus on that ending. So again, as we have with question two, if we go to our paragraph structure, only eight marks here, so only 15 minutes. And again, I only want to have a go at writing one of these paragraphs. Um, what would I be thinking? My first paragraph, the opening of the extract. So I'm just going to choose one of these as effective because it establishes the character of White Fang and creates tension for the reader. This is evidence when, evident when the writer states White Fang awoke and lay very quietly. The quote makes the reader, reader think that White Fang is preparing and is aware that there's a threat to his, um, his family, which is important because it builds the suspense and the tension as we're waiting to find out what he's going to do. Um, it's effective here as it establishes the character of White Fang as loyal, as obedient, as any of those words you could use. Then in my S section here, in my sort of structure, my furthermore, my development, I'm going to think about that change. So the writer then increases the pace or changes the focus in the description of um, the attack as White Fang struck, which is interesting because, and I'm going to think about the confusion, the panic, the violence of White Fang, you see his potential. Um, and develops a sense of White Fang being loyal or White Fang's violence. It develops the sort of pace, it develops the excitement of this piece um, and really brings it to life. So anything there in terms of what you think that the effect of the reader is there of that attack. So again, I just want you to leave this sentence starter on the on your screen. Have a go at writing just one of those paragraphs. Um, you can either do the first paragraph on the opening and sort of the, the movement, the change, or on the ending if you prefer, so any of those. Now I'm going to stop this video so that, um, I don't run out of space, um, and then you can pick up the second video in a second on question four.